Hello everyone. The history of English literature is divided into several ages. For example, Old Age, Middle Age, Renaissance Age, Restoration Age, New Classical Age, Victorian Age, Modern Age, Postmodern Age, and so on. This lecture focuses on the Middle Ages. So Middle Ages begin in 1066 and end in 1485. Let's discuss in detail the Middle Ages in the history of English literature. The Middle Ages. In 1066, a new group of warriors landed on England shore from Normandy, an independent state in France. So, before the invasion of Normandy, 1066. England was occupied by three tribes: Anglo, Saxon, and Jew, and they ruled over England till 1066. And then England was occupied by another group, and this group came from Normandy, which was an independent state in today's France. Right? So the ruler of Normandy, Duke William, had claimed to be the heir to England's throne. So there was a ruler of Normandy. His name was Duke William, and he claimed that England belonged to them. That's why he attacked. But the throne had gone instead to Harold of Wessex. So who was uh, Harold of Wessex? Harold was the last king of Anglo-Saxon. So instead of Duke William, who claimed that he is a true heir of England, the England throne went to the hand uh, of Harold, who was the last king of Anglo-Saxon. But soon Harold was defeated by Duke William, and England came under the control of Normandy. Or the who was the ruler of Normandy? Duke. William so William led his army to England where the Normandy soon defeated and a uh, kill king Harold and over overran much of the country this event the Norman conquest right this event is known as the Norman conquest changed the course of English history language and literature because this group they came from france so now there will be french influence on english literature before that there was anglo saxon and jew and there was the influence of these tribes over english language now there will be the influence of normandy people who came from france and they will influence the history the language and literature of england a french england now we will have a french england why do we call it a french england because normandy the, the group who came from normandy and normandy was an independent state of france that's why we call it a french england so following the norman conquest the anglo saxon became the subject of a norman aristocracy right so they became subject right slaves to Uh, 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 the Norman aristocracy. Now, the Normans brought their social system that is called feudalism. Now, <clears throat> you might know that what is feudalism, right? The land that is divided into three major groups. So, we will discuss this in detail on coming slide. So, uh, simply we can say that feudalism was brought to England by uh, by French people. from normandy and their french language so french language and feudalism brought to england by norman group so over time these and other elements of french culture blended into anglo saxon life to create a new english culture so these all things now are going to blend into anglo saxon life culture and language so simply we will have now the influence of french language french literature and french life or the people of england who was previously occupied by anglo saxon 
Now, here we have a detail of feudalism. Under the system of feudalism, English society was divided into clear hierarchy. So, how this hierarchy works? So, a social and economic ranking with the king at the top. So, the king would be at the top. And the king would hand over some of the land to the lords, to the nobleman. Under the king were the lords, the nobleman, to whom the king allotted parcel of land. So some of the land the king would keep himself and some of the land would be given to the lords or nobleman. And this would call fief. In return for their loyalty, because these lords, these noblemen were loyal to the king. That's why some of the lands were allotted to them. In fact, soon after the conquest, King William distributed a state of defeated English land honor to about 180 of his followers. So this hierarchy consists of a social and economic ranking. With the king at the top, under the king were the lords to whom the king allotted parcel of land called fiefs. So the whole land of the country belonged to the king. And then the king would allot some of the land to his uh, noble right or lords in turn for their loyalty because these nobles were loyal to the king that's why they that some of the land some of the parcel of land would be allotted to the nobleman in fact soon after the conquest king william distributed the estate of defeated english english land honors to about 180 of his followers so when william duke he conquered the england so the whole land was distributed among 180 of his followers right so some of the land the king held himself while some of the land he distributed among 180 of his followers those were the noblemen right now, mostly Norman barons, so each lord supplies warrior to warrior or knight to the king. Now, if the king allotted some of the parcel of land to the nobleman, so in turn these noblemen they would supply warriors or knight to the king. Is it clear? Let's see. Okay, that the king allotted land to whom to the lords. To the nobleman and then the nobleman would in turn give or supply some warrior or knight to the king right now the lords in turn distributed tracts of land to the lesser noble and then the nobles would distribute some of the land among the lesser nobles some of the land they would kept themselves these noblemen and some of the land they would distribute among lesser noble in exchange for their loyalty because these lesser nobles were loyal to the noble now at the bottom were the serbs who frame sorry who farmed small plots of land belonging to their uh, lord and gave a portion of their corpse to their lords so these were the people serfs who suffered a lot because all the time they would farm the land and they would work hard for 16 and 18 hours and sometimes 20 hours and who were the most favored and who were the more uh, benefited the king and the nobles man now let me repeat once again <clears throat> the whole land of the country belonged to the king the king would keep some of the land himself and then he would distribute the rest of to the nobleman and in turn these noblemen would supply warriors and knight to the king and then these noblemen would keep some of the land themselves and some of the land they would distribute among lesser noble and then these lesser nobles would be loyal to the noblesman and then these lesser nobles would distribute the land among the serfs and then the serf would farm the small pl plots and lend it belong to their lord and give a portion of their corpse to their lord so some of the some of the 
uh, corpse, these serfs would uh, keep themselves and the rest of would be given to their lords. So who would suffer at the end? These were the sub. Who were the farmers or the peasant class? You see, at the top, the king, then the noblesman, then uh, the knights, then the lesser noble, and then we have the serfs or the farmer. So this was like a feudal system in ancient England, which was brought to England by uh, France. Now, to secure his rule over all the uh, feudal England, King William established a strong centralized government. One of his most significant act was to order a detailed survey of all the state in England either held directly by him or in fief from him. The resulting inventory known as uh, Doomsday Book was used to determine taxes as well as feudal rights and duties. Feudalism continue here. Now, feudalism's hierarchy was also reinforced by the code of conduct known as chivalry. Under the chivalry code, a knight pledged to be loyal to his lord at, at any cost. To honor women, to protect the weak, to right injustice and wrong as defined by his lord. And to defend the Christian faith, this code was central to medieval social values and to the feudal hierarchy. So these were the characteristics of a chivalrous knight. A new language. After the Norman conquest, England's new aristocracy spoke mainly French. So aristocratic class of England, they preferred to speak French. Now well-educated people needed to know three languages. If you were a well-educated person and you were living in England in the Middle Ages, so you needed to learn and speak three languages. French for dealing with the nobility or the court. So you were supposed to learn French in order to deal nobility and to the court. Latin for the church, business and scholarship. And you were supposed to learn a Latin language in order to know the church language, business purposes and scholarship. And English for communicating with the majority of the common people. So English showed the language of the lower class in order to communicate with the people, majority of people, you needed to learn English language. So three languages you were supposed to learn. First, French to deal with nobility and court. Latin for the purpose of uh, business and church, right? and English to communicate majority of the people of the time. Influence of French over England French had a strong influence on English. Uh, many French words were added and many old English words were dropped. French influence also led to the gradual simplification of English grammar and spelling. The spellings of English language which, which were very tough and particularly grammar became easy now because of the influence of French language. Eventually, Middle English, a language in many ways similar to the English used today, developed. So there are many words, okay, that they were used in Middle Ages and still we know them, right? So like if you pick up Canterbury Tales, so 50% you understand the language and 50% you don't. So this was part first of the Middle Ages. We will discuss part second of the Middle Ages in the coming lecture in which we will discuss conflict and plague. We will discuss the Crusades. We will discuss church versus state, the Magna Carta, the rise of cities, and 100 years war, the Black Death. So thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the channel and please provide your valuable comment. Thank you so much.